Hi everybody, this is Ms. Leia and in this video, we're going to talk about isolating a, a variable in an equation, specifically kinematic equations, because this is our current topic. So the first example says, isolate time in V sub F equals V sub I plus acceleration times time. So this one is actually the easiest example, I think, among all these samples. So let's start by looking at where the RTF is, which is time. Or required to find right so our target variable is time and whenever we want to isolate something basically we just want to get rid of all the other variables that are present around it example acceleration and then v sub i as well okay now there is no hard rule when it comes to isolating the variable but my technique is that this is based on what makes things easier whenever something is separated from the target variable with, with a plus sign let's say v sub i it's separated by a plus sign away from the RTF or our target variable. What I do is that's what I get rid of first. And when something is separated with a plus or even a minus sign, what you can do is you can transpose it on the other side of the equation. And in such case, it will take the opposite sign that it originally had. So that will become V sub F minus V sub I equals acceleration times time. So once again, basically, we just transpose V sub I on the left side of the equation so it becomes negative in that process. Okay, since we're isolating time, we're not yet done, you still see that there's acceleration along with it. Okay, now, when there's a multiplication operation between the two variables, you can separate them by division. Example, acceleration times time. So that's a multiplication operation. You can get rid of A by dividing this expression by A, right? So uh, once again, if they're separated by a multiplication operation, you just do division for you to get rid of a certain variable. So because we want to get rid of acceleration, we're going to divide that by A. Okay? And that will cancel acceleration on the right side. Now, what, whatever you do on the right side of an equation, you also have to do the same thing on the left side. To maintain the equality so this will also be divided by a okay and now you will have time equals v sub f minus v sub i over a and you can flip that horizontally so it will look something like this nothing bloody what we just did is we flip it horizontally so that we will see the target variable on the left side and that's what we are used to seeing right we were used to seeing the target variable or the rtf or required to find on the left side Unless you're Japanese, I think. Okay, let's look at the next example. So that's it. We've isolated time. Another example is this. Okay, isolate V sub F in V equals V sub F plus V sub I over 2 times time. Or what we call as the equation number 2. Okay, so where is V sub F? There we have V sub F in that particular part of the equation. Okay, now my personal technique, because as I mentioned earlier, there's no hard rule when it comes to isolating variables. But my personal technique is whenever I see a denominator in the part where I have to isolate something, I get rid of that first. And in this case, I want to isolate V sub F, but there's a denominator. So I get rid of that denominator first because the rest will be easier. So in this case, for you to get rid of the denominator, you have to multiply both sides of the equation by 2. And this will become... 2d equals v sub f plus v sub i times time. Because 2 divided by 2 will give you 1. So it gets cancelled, right? And then 2 times displacement is 2d, right? That's it. Okay, we're not yet done because we want to isolate v sub f. Okay, now because v sub f and v sub i are enclosed in the parentheses, it's easier to get rid of time in this particular case, right? Because it's sort of an outcast <laughs> i like to call it here as, as an outcast and we can get rid of t not by transposing it but by dividing both sides by time right because uh if you can see time is multiplied in this expression and once again if the operation is multiplication you can get rid of the other variable using division so what we're going to do is we're going to divide both sides by time and you will have t over t equals 1, so it gets unwritten, and this will become 2v over time equals v sub f time uh, plus v sub i. 
there's no point in putting the parentheses, right? Because um, there are no other variables anyway, apart from B sub F and B sub I, which are combined by a plus sign, okay? So what we can do at this point is to fully isolate B sub F by transposing B sub I on the left, okay? Miss, is it not divided by B sub I? Okay, definitely no, because you have a plus sign. So if it's a plus or a minus sign, what you have to do is to transpose, okay? The division operation works if this is multiplication, okay? But because that's a plus sign, what you need to do is to transpose. Same thing if it's a subtra subtraction sign. You have to transpose, okay? So in this case, we're going to transpose V sub I on the left, which will give us 2D over time minus V sub I equals V sub F. There you go. We've fully isolated V sub F already. Oh, you can flip that horizontally like what we did earlier. So it will become V sub F equals 2D over time minus V sub I. So that's our final equation. So V sub F equals 2D over time minus V sub I. It's as simple as that. Uh, just a reminder, once again, um, V sub I became negative because you transpose it. It was positive before, but if, you, if it crosses the equal sign, it's going to take the opposite sign that it originally. Okay, so that's the final answer. Let's go to the next example. Okay, the next example is isolate time in D equals V sub F plus V sub I over 2 times time. It's the same equation as before, but this time we're going to isolate time. Okay, so where is time there? It, it's here, right? Okay, it might look complicated because you see a lot of things there. But when you think of this one as a single expression, it's kind of easy to get rid of. But I'll make you remember something first. Okay, let's say for example, I have x sub 2 in an equation and I want to get rid of it. What I can do is I can multiply it by its reciprocal, which is 2 over x, right? Because if I want to get rid of x over 2, multiplying it by its reciprocal will give me 2x over 2x and 2x over 2x equals 1. So if, if this expression becomes 1, obviously it will remain unwritten in the expression as long as I have a multiplication operation like this one, right? So in short, what I'm saying is this. You can get rid of V sub F plus V sub I over 2 by multiplying the equation by the reciprocal of this whole expression. Like this one, like x over 2 can be cancelled or get rid of if you multiply it by its reciprocal, right? Because it will become 1. So that is what we are going to do. But let me erase this first. So what we're going to do is we're going to multiply the equation by the reciprocal of this expression that we want to get rid of since we're isolating time. So that will become D equals VF plus, wait, let me provide some more space. Okay, let's write it first. Huh? D equals, okay, VF plus VI over 2 times time. So what I want to happen is this. We're going to multiply both sides by 2 over vf plus vi because what will happen is that you can cancel this already right because look at that it will give you if you look at this expression just this look at this long that part okay what's happening right there is that you're multiplying this whole expression to that right side right and also to the left side but we're gonna do that later so what's gonna happen right there is that you're gonna have okay two times vf plus vi, and then multiplying this by this, you're also going to have 2 times vf plus vi, which will cancel out to 1, right? In short, time will be isolated if you do that, right? So it's as simple as that. Now, um, let's finish the whole thing. So what's going to happen now is that because you're multiplying vf plus vi over 2 by its reciprocal, this can be cancelled, and then time will be left alone on the right side. Of course, you're going to multiply this as well to the left side of the equation. So you're going to have 2 times D, that's 2D, over VF plus VI equals time. So that's your final answer. You can flip that horizontally as well. That's it. Okay.
let's see. If, okay, there's one more example. Let's do this one. Isolate a and bf squared equals bi squared plus 2ab. Okay, so I want to isolate acceleration, and there's quite a lot of variables that are lurking around it. Okay, so the first thing I want to get rid of is something that's separated with a plus or minus sign because it, it can be transposed on the other side. So this will become vf squared minus vi squared equals 2ab. Okay, what do we do next? Um, acceleration is not yet fully isolated because we still have 2 and b, okay? So what we do is to divide both sides of the equation by 2b because once again, if you have multiplication operations, you can get rid of the extra variables by performing division. Always remember that, okay? So we're, we're going to do the same thing on the left side, right? Divide it by 2d as well. So cancel this, cancel this, and you're going to have a fully isolated already. So you're going to have vx squared minus vi squared over 2d equals a. Or if you flip that horizontally, that's going to be a equals vf squared minus vi squared over 2d. So that's the final answer. Now in the next example, we have isolate acceleration in the equation v equals v sub i t plus a t squared divided by 2. In this case, I specify that v sub i is greater than 0 because as you have probably noticed, in some physics problems, v sub i is actually 0. And in such case, v i t gets cancelled. So it becomes easier to isolate whatever you want to isolate. But in this specific case, I wanted v sub i to be greater than 0. So we're going to have v i t in the expression as we isolate a. Okay. Now, again, there's no hard rule, but um, in this particular scenario, we want to isolate A. Therefore, we have to get rid of all the other variables around it. So the most urgent things you have to work on is either to get rid of this or this denominator. And in fact, whether you get rid of this first or this denominator first, it will be equally easy, okay? Because for sure, the last thing you're going to remove from the right side would be t squared, right? Obviously, because it's um, it's right beside acceleration. So either you start with vit or 2. But in this case, I'd like to start with getting rid of the denominator first, which is 2. Okay, so what I would do is that I would multiply both sides of the equation by 2. So <clears throat> there. And then what we're going to have is 2d equals 2vit plus at squared, okay? How did that happen? 2 times d is 2d, and then 2 times vit is 2vit, and then 2 times at squared over 2 is at squared, right? Because 2 and this denominator 2, if you divide them together, if you divide them, 2 over 2 will give you 1, right? And it's not written down in this particular expression. So at squared will be isolated. Okay, the next thing we're going to do is that because we want to isolate a, I told you before that it's easier to get rid of an expression if it's separated by a plus or minus sign rather than dealing with t squared first, for example. So what you can do is to transpose 2vit on the left side so that we're going to have 2d minus 2vit equals at squared. So what happened there is we simply transpose 2vit on the left, so it will take the opposite sign that it originally had. We're not yet done because we're isolating a and you still have t squared. So because you have a multiplication operation there, it's acceleration times t squared, what you do is division. So you're going to have divide, we're going to divide both sides by t squared, and this will cancel t squared on the right side. And our final equation would be a equals 2d minus 2vit over t squared. So that is our final answer. Okay, let's have, I think it's the last one. Okay, let's have the last one. It says isolate a in d equals vit plus a t squared over 2. So it's almost the same as the previous one, except that v sub i 
is zero. Okay, so we expect it to be easier because if VIP is zero, we can cancel VIP in the expression, right? I've seen some people before who would cancel VI only in the expression because it's zero, but they retain time. And that is wrong because look, if V sub I is zero, whatever is the value of time, it will still get canceled because zero times whatever time it is, you're gonna have zero. So you should cancel this whole expression if whenever V sub I is zero, right? Because zero times time would give you zero, regardless, even if your time is one million seconds or something. So we're gonna have, because VI is, uh, VI is zero rather, we're gonna have V, okay, equals AT squared over two, right? And since we're isolating acceleration, I told you before, I'm actually fond of getting rid of the denominator first. So I would like to multiply both sides by two. So it becomes two D equals AT squared. Once again, it's very simple. We're just multiplying both sides by two. So it becomes two times D and that gives us two D and then two times AT squared over two will give us AT squared because two divided by this two will give us one, right? It will get canceled on the right side, okay? So you're gonna have 2D equals 80 squared. The last thing we're gonna do is to divide both sides by T squared. So it gets canceled on the right side. And our final expression would be A equals 2D over T squared. So that is our final answer. So I hope that that video helps you. Thank you so much. Have a great day.